Hi, and welcome to another fantastic training session with Learning to Lean. Let's get started. Welcome to ASQ Yellow Belt Exam Prep, Chapter 4, Team Basics. In today's session, you will learn the different types of teams, stages of team development, decision-making tools, and communication methods. Let's look at Team Six Sigma. Let's look at how teams form. Six Sigma teams consist of a cross-functional group of people with usually five to seven actual team members, and that depends on the size and scope of the project. The team is created and formed to address the issue from every angle. Review the Chapter 2 video to understand the different roles and responsibilities on a Six Sigma team. First, let's look at the different types of teams. The first type of team that we'll look at are virtual teams. Virtual teams enable people from all over the world to interact on a project. Some of the benefits include reduced administrative and logistical costs, real-time data sharing and updating. While with any team, there comes challenges. With a virtual team, you can have slower team building progress. You may have an inability to get a true commitment and buy-in from the team members, and there's always potential for miscommunication. However, virtual teams can be very effective. It's a good idea to have periodic face-to-face -face meetings with virtual team members on a project to grow relationships and strengthen the project. The next type of team we'll look at are continuous improvement teams. With a continuous improvement team, team members are often all involved with the same process. The team is given a goal by management to improve the yield, which means higher quality, less defects, etc. Improve productivity, such as reducing downtime or stoppages, or increase safety. The structure of a continuous improvement team is having a leader that is a process owner, meeting on a regular basis, applying continuous improvement tools, and achieving the goal, and then starting on the next. Next up are self-managed teams. Within this team, we have a group of independent team members. These folks are self-sustaining and leading and have proven effectiveness. Together, they work towards a common goal. Team harmony is achieved with a self-managed team after the team members have worked with each other on other projects and have an appreciation for each other's skill and discipline. The last type of team that we'll discuss today is a cross-functional team. You need a cross-functional team for projects that include product development, continual improvement, and problem solving. Within a cross-functional team, you need representatives from all different functions. The advantage of this type of team is efficiency and results. However, just like any other team, there are challenges such as priorities, a sense of urgency, and commitment. Next up is looking at team stages and dynamics. Let's look at the six different types of team stages and dynamics. Stage one is forming. This is where team members get to know each other. The group is immature and not much work is being accomplished. Stage two is storming. Team members voice their ideas and ideas and understanding may start to conflict. Not much work is being accomplished there either. Next, we move on to norming. Team members resolve their conflicts and start to function as a team some amount of work gets accomplished. Stage four is forming. The team is effective. The skills are complementary. They realize their interdependencies and a large amount of work gets accomplished. Then we have adjourning. The team is disbanded. So the project is complete. 
The members go on with their other activities of their work and major changes can result in going back to that forming stage. And finally, recognition. Unfortunately, this step is often forgotten. You can recognize people as easily as sending them a thank you note or an email, putting the recognition in a newsletter or an all employee meeting, certificates of accomplishments, bonuses, etc. Accompanying each of the team stages and dynamics is the role of the team leader. The team leader has a role in each of the stages of team development. In stage one, the forming stage of the team, the leadership role is directing. So coordinating and directing the team at that time. As the team approaches the storming phase, that's when the team leader moves into coaching. As the team moves into norming, the leader is there really just for a supporting aspect as the team really starts to get some work accomplished. And when the team moves and matures into performing, the leader's role is delegating because a large amount of work is being accomplished and we need to make sure that everyone has the appropriate amount of work to complete. With every team, there is a possibility of negative team dynamics. Let's explore that concept a little bit more. Negative team dynamics can have an impact on the team and on the project. From a team aspect, it can derail motivation. Negative team dynamics can hurt egos and self-esteem, can also intimidate team members. From a project perspective, those negative team dynamics can affect the goals and objectives by not meeting them, revising of targets, and potentially project cancellation. Other negative impacts include project milestones and deadlines to be missed, poor utilization of project resources, cost overruns, and turnover of key team members. Make sure you review the common negative team dynamics and potential countermeasures starting on page 39 of the Certified Six Sigma Yellow Belt Handbook. Now let's look at some cool decision-making tools. These tools can be used within a project team or even within just a small handful of people. So let's get started. The first decision-making tool is brainstorming. Brainstorming is a fun, creative process where a team develops as many ideas as possible on a particular topic or problem. Use a whiteboard and resist the urge to start with your computer. A few tips. Everyone participates. There is no judgment, criticism, or distractions during the activity. Wild ideas are welcomed and encouraged, and quantity is important versus quality. You do need a strong and experienced facilitator for a brainstorming session, and don't forget to document the results. Next up is nominal group technique. This is a type of brainstorming, but with little vocal interaction. This is a great tool for a newly formed team or with a group of people that are hesitant to speak up and feel more comfortable writing their decisions down. The team is given approximately 15 minutes to generate their ideas silently. Write their ideas on individual post-it notes and then read each aloud and provide clarity. Everyone participates and there is no judgment. The final tool that we'll look at today is called multi-voting. This complements the nominal group technique. In this particular decision-making tool, the team has approximately 15 minutes to generate their ideas on individual post-it notes. The ideas are consolidated and numbered or lettered, 
and then the team is asked to prioritize the top five to ten items in a short period of time. The final topic for today's session is communication methods. Effective meetings are key to projects success. Are we talking about the right topic in our meeting? Are the right people in the meeting, either physically or virtually? Are there associated actions or are we, as I like to call it, sitting and spinning? And are we getting value out of the meetings? Meetings shouldn't be created or held without an agenda. The agenda should be an itemized list with the meeting subject, items required to be discussed, items presenter, and time allotment. Meeting logistics include the meeting room and any video conferencing capabilities. If you're not familiar with the room or the technology, ensure that you test it out before your meeting. Meeting minutes are a record of the meeting. They are essential to ensure the key decisions are made and the actions are agreed on by the team members. They're formally recorded and kept for accountability. A project status report is a periodic report created by the project manager or team leader and sent to all of the team members in management to list the status of the project, upcoming milestones, risks, and mitigation plans. In today's session, you learned the different types of teams, the stages of team development, you learned a few decision-making tools, and communication methods. Thanks for joining me in today's session. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're the first to know about videos as they are released. You can also find us online at www.learningtolean.training. Thanks and have a great day.